So me and Molly just got back from two weeks in Scandinavia, which included four nights in Oslo. And while it's such a beautiful place, it's every bit as expensive. And I'd seen a lot of um, Oslo on a budget videos before I went out there, but I don't feel like anybody really like got to grips with how cheaply you can actually travel if you put your mind to it. I mean, people mentioned things like restaurants still on a budget video, which I think is just ridiculous. I mean, a meal for two in Oslo could easily set you back say 50 pounds and I mean we each tried to spend 50 pounds while we were out there in Oslo the whole time uh, which works out to about 12 pounds a day and we were successful scrimping that much. So I'm going to go through seven ways you can save money while you're in Oslo. So the first tip is relevant as soon as you land, as soon as you get to Oslo Gardermoen airport there's going to be these people in nice shiny uniforms directing you to these machines where you can buy tickets for airport transfers um, but all the nice branded ones are for this company called fly to get or fly Toget or something um, And that costs 18 pounds to get into the city center. Whereas if you just go with uh, The Norwegian National Rail Service that costs nine pounds. So you're saving nine pounds already My second tip is to go outdoors I feel like if you did all the things that get like huge ratings on TripAdvisor if you did the Natural History Museum cruises around the fjords the Viking Museum, the Viking Ship Museum, and the National Gallery. You're not really gonna remember any of all that time. I mean, you're in one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And on all those attractions, it comes to like 60 pounds plus. Whereas like all the things we did were outdoors and I feel like I remember them a lot more. I have much fonder memories. Instead of doing all those things for like 60 quid, we went island hopping in the Oslo Bay, which was just crazy beautiful. Probably the best views I've ever seen. And the boat ride to get to those islands, which is included with a travel pass. How much better is it gonna be just because you paid 30 quid to go on a cruise on like some special boat, whatever. We went to a lake whose name I'm not gonna pronounce, but I'll show it here and that was just amazing, got some really nice photos and had such a nice peaceful day there. And we went to a bunch of parks, um, gardens, we went to the Oslo City Museum, um, and we went up to the Opera House and that was totally stunning. And all of those things I've just mentioned come to a total of zero pounds. So we spent nothing on attractions. Compared to spending all this money on the big tourist stuff, I just don't see why you do that when the countryside is right there and it's free. The third thing I want to say is don't buy the Oslo Pass. That's such a ripoff. Everything you do outdoors is going to be way more unique. And the Oslo Pass, if you spend all that money, you're just trying to justify the price by going to museums and attractions all day, every day. The pass itself is £72 for three days. So, I mean, if you're trying to scrimp as much as we were, you're already over budget and like you can't even feed yourself or anything. So it's a, just a total ripoff. And they try and say, oh, but you get discount at restaurants, but that's totally irrelevant if you're trying to go cheaply. I mean, a 50 pound meal turning into a 40 pound meal isn't that big of a deal because you just can't afford it. And anyway, Oslo is small enough that you don't need a travel pass every day. And that leads on to my fourth tip, which is to just spend half an hour on Google Maps before you go and group your transport days and your walking days so you don't end up doing like one thing where you need the tube every day instead of doing three tube things in one day and only buying one 24-hour tube pass. You can save a lot of money that way just by grouping your walking and your transport days. The fifth and probably the thing that saved us the most money is to go private room on Airbnb. Don't get a hotel or anything where you can't cook for yourself but equally don't get a whole house where it's going to be super expensive. What we did was we got a private room in somebody else's place and they were really nice, but I mean, we were out the whole time. So it was just somewhere where we could save money by not having our own place and also save money by being able to cook for ourselves and not going out to restaurants. I mean, I can't believe so many of the guides mention restaurants and things when all that money you could spend, you could just be cooking for yourself. We put a little bit of effort into finding out what the cheapest local supermarkets are in each place we went to at a supermarket called Rema 1000. We were able to feed ourselves for those four days for less than 20 quid each. I mean, which is less than like one meal in a restaurant for that whole time. And that included like buying booze and we only took um, carry on luggage. So we had to buy like toiletries and stuff in the first place we went to. And considering a beer can be like nine or 10 quid, you just save a ridiculous amount of money. I mean, I don't think you can really say that you're traveling on a budget if you're able to like eat out or drink out in Oslo. Tip number six is a really, really good one that will apply wherever you go in the world is to get a card called Monzo. And they're not sponsoring this, I'm sure there are other alternatives, but this works for me. It's a free prepaid card which you manage via an easy app on your phone. Um, and then you can spend that anywhere in the world with no fees, no commission on the exchanging. And you get the interbank exchange rate for free. So the one that comes up uh, when you type in to Google to try and convert currency, you get that rate for free every time wherever you are in the world. So that's really handy anyway, but especially like on this trip where we did three different countries, you don't want to budget this many Norwegian kroner, this many Swedish kroner. 
So we just had a card where we put money on in pounds and we could spend it in any of the three places without having leftovers. And my final tip is more of a philosophy for when you're traveling, just be a cheapskate. I mean, we could so easily have spent like two quid on water in Oslo whenever we got a bit thirsty but we were each really careful to carry a reusable bottle with us. We would like buy postcards and not buy stamps and just send them when we got home. They have this thing in Scandinavia where the cans and bottles that you get from supermarkets, you could take them back to the supermarket and get a really small amount of money from them. But I mean, we were always really careful to do that because then you basically are getting free food from the supermarket vouchers that you get. Even though it's a small thing, you just have to, you know, put in the effort and the research to really scrimp and save here. And research can also help you in ways like where entrance to the National Gallery as a tenor, we found out you could go for free on a Thursday. So we were able to do a premium uh, touristy thing and go see the Scream for free um, and saved like a whole day's budget basically for us. Think things through and don't like buy into touristy conveniences. The final thing is we, if you break down our costs for our private room in someone's house that we got on Airbnb, um, we were only spending 18 each per night, which is just crazy cheap for Oslo considering we were still walking distance of everything. Uh, more details about the place we stayed are included in the full vlogs which show like all the stories of doing the outdoorsy stuff that I said was so great um, and hopefully prove how good that is compared to just like going around loads of museums. And also please comment if you can think of anything else to really cheapskate Oslo because what really wound me up before I went was watching all these videos and they're like oh you can't leave Oslo without trying this sort of food and I'm thinking well that would be like half my budget it's crazy. So yeah if you feel the same uh, or if this video helped you please comment or leave a like or something thank you so much. And I'll see you next time when I make this same sort of video about how we did Gothenburg so cheaply.